Aloha everyone, it's Kenan and welcome back to the channel. And today we are here for part 3 of my conversation with structural engineer and YouTuber Matt Picardo. And I think today's a juicy one. We're going to talk about money. How much money do design engineers make versus construction engineers? And what kind of lifestyle that gives us and if our income is worth it? And at the end of the video, I'd be super curious to hear your thoughts. Is this what you expected or is this something that you've seen yourself in the industry? So if you're ready to go, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. And now let's get into the video. What about money? Talk about what people can expect getting into the industry. What do you, what do you see in your, in your realm? <laughs> uh, the way it relates to uh, construction engineering this is kind of funny so it's like uh like i'm i'm a proponent of engineers uh if you're a student you know getting a engineer uh getting a construction engineering job because you're out in the field right and then you get if you if you do that and then you want to get into engineering you're going to be like what the hell? Why are they paying me so low? <laughs> it's like I'm staying in construction. <laughs> <laughs> that that is <laughs> so that, that is I, true. I think in general, uh, construction engineering does pay more, and especially with those big construction firms, I'm sure the salary goes up there. And uh, but like structural engineering isn't a slouch either in terms of like salary. Um, you look up surveys, at least in the U.S., uh, probably right now, an entry-level structural engineer is probably around uh, 70K. So it's not like software engineering where you're making like, I don't know, 100 or plus starting out yeah. or whatnot. Yeah. But, you know, you're not going to be like dirt poor. Like for me, it's, yeah. it's the way I live my life and the way I spend. Like I live a comfortable life. Like I am not like worrying how i'm going to pay my rent next month or whatnot so right. for me it's it's a comfortable salary and uh it's it's not a dead end uh in terms of like it leads to stuff i think if you get into structural engineering and for whatever reason you don't like it there's other ways you can use that degree and your experience i know a lot of uh, engineers that do go into construction because it pays more uh or they want to go into the city, work for the city, maybe plan checking and whatnot. Um, so I think the consulting side, you may hear about like complaints about like us not getting paid a lot. Uh, I think that's a valid point. I think for all the things that we do, a lot of people don't see it. Like all the codes that we have to read and, and interpret and the testing that we go through, uh, people won't appreciate it. And that's our fault too, as in the industry, we don't promote ourselves in the best way you'll want to hear about us uh we don't want exposure like mm. and when we do want exposure it's more of like a look at all, at all the cool stuff that i built and uh i'm better than everybody else and that xyz like these guys don't know anything right uh and i think it's i don't think that's the way we should promote ourselves yeah and unfortunately I think the only time you'll hear about us is when like a building falls down, like true. <laughs> so true. all, all yeah. the public no, knows is like, true. what did the what do the engineers do? Like, right. can't no, they design a building true. right? Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah, you'll hear about us about like that point one percent of when uh, maybe we failed our duties as a structural engineer, mm -hmm. but at least in the U.S., what about like those ninety nine point nine percent of all those successful buildings that are standing up yeah. yeah it's like those things are successful but you won't hear about it because i think as engineers the default personality is probably introverts and we don't want that exposure That's uh so true yeah no i agree with that uh, we, we complain instead <laughs> yeah, we, we complain internally and then yeah uh, we complain and no, instead and no, nothing happened <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, these, these guys don't appreciate us. <laughs> like, that's all we could do. We don't want to do, like, the extra work of, like, uh, going out there and sharing our stuff on, on social media, man. Like, that's one of the reasons I started YouTube is uh, a lot of us don't want to do it. It was, like, we know how to promote ourselves, but we don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, like, 
promote our industry. So that was definitely one of the reasons, but kind of went off on a tangent, but salary wise, yeah. for those of you that are wondering 70 K probably starting in the U S and maybe five or six years uh, down, you'll probably reach that hundred K mark, uh, at least in the West coast where the cost of living is a little higher. Uh, and then it'll go up from there. If you, if you become like a principal or an associate principal in, um, in your firm, that's for private consulting, by the way. Yeah. Not government or yeah. What's what, what do you guess the cut down is to go public? Uh, what do you mean by cut down? Or like, or I'm assuming it's less to work government. Oh, government. Yeah. 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 No, I think government's a good job. I, oh, from, really? is, from my is... experience and the people that I've talked to, mm -hmm. it, it depends on what you want. Cause mm -hmm. like there's when most people become or want to become structural engineers, they are, they're thinking of consulting, designing buildings. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, if you get a, from my knowledge and from the people that I've talked to that, that are working in government, like it's, I get the impression that it's less technically challenging. Like you're not designing for the most part. There mm -hmm. are some where I think you do get to design, but for the most part, if you're like a plan checker, you're not designing buildings. You are like checking the design of others. Mm. And so pro probably less stress and less deadlines uh, because like, I think the cities were, they're kind of in the gatekeeper position. If we can't uh, get approval from the city, our projects don't work. So you're kind of in that higher up position if you're like a plan, a government plan checker. Mm -hmm. and I'm assuming that's less hours, but even the benefits and the salary is uh, short-term, it's a lot better. You get better benefits and better salary. Mm -hmm. So it's that is a tempting option, or that's an option that some engineers that I've seen mm -hmm. that don't want to work in consulting anymore, they go and use your structural engineering skills for for the government and they probably get paid more and have really good benefits, mm -hmm. but more with the, with the cons of less technical work, less design work and probably more political as well. There's mm -hmm. it's, it's government. So you got to go through a lot of approvals and checks and balances and uh, yeah, things like that. So what kind of hours do you work for your $70,000 starting salary? What can they expect? Uh, for me, it depends on your firm. I, I it's not uncommon to to work overtime uh, if you're just starting out. Uh, at least this is this is my experience because I know some people in the industry have uh, gotten other experiences. But for me, it was I was so eager to learn that I would want to work, you know, like overtime. Like mm -hmm, it was. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, when I take on a project, you know, I like to take ownership of that project and I want to do like a really good job on it. So for me, I would work overtime because I didn't know anything when I was first starting out. And yeah, even on my free time, like I work on a project because I was really interested on how to learn it. And even like my managers telling me like, dude, go home, you know, like yeah, I appreciated yeah. that they weren't <clears throat> making me like stay overtime. And, uh, you know, they'd help me out. So uh, I'd work overtime the first couple of years, but it, it, a lot of it was voluntary. Like no one was really making me do it. Uh, but it's not uncommon. I've heard plenty of stories where uh, firms may, may, work, may work you overtime. Maybe they're understaffed or whatnot, and it just needs to happen. And everyone needs to work uh, maybe like 50 hours. Uh, but for me, uh, past couple of years, it's been pretty, it's been pretty uh, balanceable in terms of work mm. life. Like it's uh, times I'll work 40 hours a week, but then obviously when deadlines come in, it's like uh, up and down. Like sometimes it'll be okay, but then, oh, we got a deadline. Let's, we got to do what we got to do to get those, uh, those deadlines in kind of like school. So when you have a big deadline, uh, you'll put in the hours to get it done. So for me, it's it's been up and down, but it's been sustainable. I've 
uh, I think for me, it's just balancing all this other extra stuff, especially like studying and whatnot for licensing exams. That always sucks, but uh, uh, I'll find a way to get through it. And yeah, so there's different experiences, but from if you go into different sectors, maybe more specialty structural engineering, maybe for fabricators or the government, uh, I've heard that those are more uh, schedule lenient. Uh, so yeah, I, don't be surprised if you work overtime, but hopefully you're not being worked to death. If you are, there's firms that don't do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's different. It depends on your firm. Yeah, no, that, that is that is that is pretty true. Yeah. What's the salary <clears throat> and like the the work experience like for uh, construction engineering? So here in Hawaii, and Hawaii typically pays a little bit higher. Construction is, unless this is just my own two uh, companies that I work for, it seems to follow cost of living pretty closely. So you'll get paid <clears throat> you'll get paid a little bit more on the West Coast. And, you know, you might have a little bit of an adjustment if you're more towards the middle of the U.S. But for here in Hawaii, a starting engineer will probably be in the mid to average, mid to high 70s, maybe 80s, um, with the potential up to $100,000 uh, starting, depending on the company. Um, construction is not the place to be if you just want to make money and you don't like your work because you do have to work a lot. Um, especially if you want to progress, uh, like I said, everything is experience-based. You're going to have to put in the hours. Um, it's a higher stress industry. I think that's why they tend to try to pay a little bit more. Um, the first job that I was on uh, was a $300 million high rise and that was a tough job. Um, most of us were working seven days a week uh, towards the end and um, maybe 10 hour days on the weekends, 12 to 14, 16 hour days during the weekdays um, towards the end of that job. Um, but I loved it. Kind of similar to what Matt said. It was, uh, I really wanted to learn. I wanted to be a sponge. I wanted to insert myself into as many places that I could um probably did a, little, a lot more and, and it did me a service for sure um because usually on a big job you get pigeonholed into one thing so you'll be the engineer in charge of concrete only or you'll be the engineer in charge of you know the exterior envelope uh and you won't get to see how everything comes together which is the key to construction um but for me I, I was in concrete, I did rebar, and then I just jumped in wherever they needed help, whether it was the amenity deck, whether it was the civil work down below, whether it was the roof, um, because I wanted it. And that's why, you know, maybe some people would say that I, you know, worked too much or did, but that's really what I wanted to spend my time on at the time. Um, it's dwindled, so I've had jobs where I've worked maybe, I haven't really worked less than 50 a week, usually, typically. Um, but I don't feel it. It's, it's always, we start at six thirty, seven o'clock and usually it just ends up being like four thirty, five o'clock. And then I'm like, I still have all this stuff to do that I didn't achieve. Um, because there's just so much going on in construction. It's, it's, there's so many things to do. Um, so it, it never really feels like I'm being overworked, but it is kind of the nature of, of the business. I think we're trying to work away from the entire work life uh, or, you know, working so many hours. I think that's becoming more trendy, I would say, but it, it's very, it's very tough for the way that our industry is set up to, to get away from that. Uh, either that or we'll hire more people and then our salaries will probably get cut. Um, I don't really know if there's a big difference in like the quality of your life, depending on each company that you go for, because construction in itself, just the nature of the industry uh, kind of causes you to work a little bit more than normal. 
So when you're at a small job, you might be more working on multiple jobs. So sometimes people think that if you work instead of a general contractor, you can work for a subcontractor. Then it's like, oh, good, I can only focus on drywall or I can only focus on concrete. But what ends up happening is that in order for those companies to stay afloat, they need to work on multiple jobs. So you're not just focused on one project. You're doing concrete or you're doing drywall or glass for three or four different jobs. So it's still kind of the same, the same thing for that. So it pays you a decent living, but you, you, do, you, do, have to, uh, you do have to put in the time, you do have to put in the effort. Um, I think this generation of, of people coming in, I feel like we're putting more of an emphasis on the work-life balance aspect of it. But I think it just goes for any, anything that you try to do, anything that you really love or want to get better at. You just, you have to put in the time. And I've always believed the best time to do it is in your 20s when you really don't have that, or typically you don't really have that many commitments, things to do. You might as well just work on your own skills. And that's to me the best way to accelerate your growth. Yeah, I think from what you... <clears throat> Uh, from what you said, and I think possibly even for both industries is, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll probably work overtime. Uh, but I, I think like the dirty secret is like when we do, hopefully we, we love it. Like for, we want to do that because we, we, we like the work that we're doing and, uh, yeah. Cause for me, it's, when I was first starting out, that's what I did. Now I know a lot more and, you know, I can work less because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. So things like no, that, sure. but then it even comes back to, uh, you know, training and mentoring the the next generation of, of engineers. And if you get, uh, you know, success from that, or if you like doing that as well, I think it's all part of the growth, but you have to, to know yourself and your, your situation like you're implying like you're you probably have time when you're younger uh to work that much but then as you get older maybe you get a family things can change and you know you have to reflect on that too as uh, as you're getting further in whatever career you're doing you, you kind of have to always see what the the priority is and yeah. it's, it's different for everybody no for sure and i think yeah having that self-awareness is super important I mean, just in general, I think, um, and it really will come out when, when you're when you're working. You don't want to be miserable. Like the money is never worth it, really. I mean, you can, like, it's, like even to it's maybe tens of thousands that you might be making more than if you were to work something else, right? But it's at the end of the day, you want to know for yourself what you really, what you really, how you're wired, and what you really want to do. So, yeah, if you're if you're working yeah. 100 hours a week and you hate your job, like, leave. Yeah. like but yeah, no, it's not sustainable. If you get fulfillment yeah. from it, then yeah. you know that's up to you. Yeah, and the thing is too, I think it's kind of weird because you need to have that self awareness, but you need to balance it too with not over analyzing the situation and kind of just jumping in. Um, I don't know how you feel, but you know, I still feel like I if I really wanted to, I, I don't, but like, if I really wanted to, I could change careers and it'd be fine. Like you have time. You don't need to have everything figured out from day one. You have the, the opportunity to kind of move back and forth, but until you pick something, right, you'll never get any clarity. So. Yeah. And I think what's fortunate about, uh, you know, our careers, uh, structural and construction, it, a lot of the skills are transferable to other career paths. Uh, you're not locked into one. You can use those same skills. I'm sure for construction engineering, uh, you can get into um, a lot of other different uh, careers if you wanted to, just because I think those skills are just so transferable. Well, that's the end of part three. I hope you enjoyed that and maybe learned a little bit more about the industry. As always, if you have any questions or thoughts, be sure to comment them below. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe down below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much. We really appreciate your time and we'll see you on the next video.